Hey everyone, taking the opportunity today to discuss uh, another special 911, 1994 Type 964 911 Turbo S Flockbau. <laughs> Flakbau translating to English as flat nose, loosely translated to what we normally use is slant nose. So back in 1994, the option was $60,000, right? Which in today's standards is a lot of money, but what did you get for $60,000 other than the famous front end that everybody knows and sets the car apart and you can tell that this is obviously a Flakbau slant nose. The front splitter, the spoiler, different than the standard 3.6. Uh, the wings here, a little bit more downforce. If you walk around to the back and we pop the engine lid, note also involved in the S package was a different wing with the louvers that the standard 3.6 models did not have. We open it up, can't see anything of course, huge intercooler the X88 type engine, originally developed by Andile for Porsche, for IMSA, for competition, essentially cranking out 25 more horsepower, 385 horsepower total. And Porsche was able to do this by bigger ports in the cylinder heads, a bigger turbocharger, the Triple K, the KKK a turbocharger, bigger fuel injectors, and essentially just some timing. 25 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot, but those of us who have driven and know these cars, if you get the opportunity to drive them, do so. Uh, they are absolutely exhilarating. And 25 horsepower is substantial upgrade. Also in the rear, involved in the S package, the quad tip exhausts versus the standards on the 3.6 turbo. Getting into the nitty gritty of things, and this is where I wanna to touch upon a couple points where X83, X84, X85, kind of some differences, mainly the, the X84 and X85 are essentially um, the same in terms of body lines. The X83 Japanese, those 10 cars, very different through this area. I'm gonna point out the Speedline wheels. Everybody knows them as, you know, certainly some of their favorite Porsche wheels that they've ever done, made by Speedline for Porsche an alloy wheel, three-piece, used them on a few different models of this era. Love, for instance, the 3.8 911RS, which had a similar wheel, just a lot deeper because it was a bigger tire, right, to support that. And the brake calipers, I'll point that out while I'm here. Brakes the same as on a standard 3.6 turbo, but it's the first year Porsche used the big reds, as we all have come to know them as, uh, 1994, the first year Porsche implemented those and went to those bigger, better brakes. Um, through this area, rear quarter panel, you got an air intake. That is not on the standard 3.6, but on the S models, air intake on the rear quarters. And through this area right here, if you think about the 80 slant noses, right, very different, and the X83 cars, basically from here on back, the door starts to taper back a little bit, and it creates almost like a shelf here on the rocker. And a different intake on the rear quarter with some louvers. That is the main difference when you're just looking at the car from afar, you can tell if it's an X83 or an 84 or 85. So the rear rocker, the side rockers, pardon me, the rear intakes, wheels, awesome, and front splitter, whale tail, uh, rear spoiler, and obviously the famous flat nose flock bow. Interior of the car, same as a 3.6 turbo, right? Nothing really changed on the interior. Um, you know, 60,000 bucks, a lot of money. And by today's standards, Porsche didn't feel the need, I guess, to, to mess with the interior. Very comfortable. So that is kind of some points of difference between the X83 Japanese cars, those 10 cars, 27 rest of the world X84 cars, and 39 of these US specification cars, uh, totaling 76 
Total production for the world, some of the rarest 911s Porsche has ever produced.